Good morning. It is a um, lecture for Wednesday, and uh, it's going to be Wednesday, the, the 1st of April. And uh, you can see that I'm simulating being on a boat here. We've got the, the rocking of the ship on this piece of paper. That's what it looks like to me. So we are uh, still continuing to talk about uh, tankers. And I have, uh, this is sort of the third part. get this all drawn out here. So we're still talking about tankers and uh, we're going to get into some of the, the a little bit of details. We're also going to talk about how how uh, a sort of a basic introduction of how tankers are loaded and discharged because I think that does have a part with the, the layout and the construction rules. We'll certainly get into that. Um, hey before I go off on the lecture a couple of good things. Uh, uh, Robert, that was a nice uh, uh, thread that you started about um, the hospital ships. Uh, I didn't realize, and I had forgotten that they were uh, started out their life uh, back what was it, in the 70s as a Clementi uh, class tanker. We're talking, obviously, we're talking about the USNS uh, Comfort and the uh, and the Mercy, and so that's all uh, in our in our minds today. There was another comment uh, made. Sid, you made a comment about just uh, you know the uh, possibility of uh, you know disease on those ships, and you know they're pretty tight quarters. And and you reference what it was like on the training ship. Just somebody gets a cold, everybody gets a cold. Um, another person talked about well, navy ships. Uh, one person said um, it was Matt said he was he spent the whole day doing cleaning stations on uh, on some navy ships. So we're uh, and then, of course, we got the Theodore, Theodore Roosevelt out there in the ocean, the, the carrier, with um, uh, reports of significant uh, COVID-19 uh, confirmed on the training ship. So all of those mariners were, were thinking about. <clears throat> all right. So let's um, let's uh, yeah. There's my uh, there's my cup of tea. Let's get going with the lecture. We are, I think I've shown you this picture. This is a pretty complex tanker. Let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six tanks. Uh, there was the profile view. Uh, let's see, we got a deep tank up here that I can can picture. We're getting pretty good at reading these up. Looking, I know you're getting pretty good at reading these up. Descriptors, here's the deck view. And looking down and just take note of this area right here, this uh, these series of pipes, those are up on deck. And then this one that goes left and right athwart ships, that that is something called the manifold. And I think everybody caught their eye. There's a helo pad on that as well. So um, I also think that we had seen this picture. We had talked about this cutaway view, and we'd looked at this, and we saw another cutaway view. If you'd watched uh, the Monday, the Monday video, um, I did something on that. I pointed out as I was talking about the the um, Alaska Frontier tanker and the build of that. But we are um, starting to learn all the parts and uh, we'll keep moving here. Um, you know, one of the things I wanted to mention was you know, tankers ride really close to the water. Now, this is a really big sea here, and this is a, a relatively small tanker, but you can see seas are crashing up on deck. And uh, tankers have very little freeboard, and that's it's a uh, tanker's decks are awash. With seawater, you know, if it's solid water, a wave that comes up. If it's solid, uh, as opposed to spray or foam, if it's solid one, it's called taking green water on deck. And otherwise, if it's spray or foamy, that's referred to as taking white white water. Those are logbook entries. Uh, vessel experiencing heavy seas, taking green water uh, over the deck would be a logbook entry. This little uh, picture out of the textbook, um, this is, let's see, uh, figure number 22. And this is, uh, what was that say, 12,700 uh, 12, uh, dead weight tons. That's a, a product ca a tanker. And I wanted to mention this pretty briefly. Uh, you can see how it's laid out. Uh, first of all, we see it's corrugated bulkheads. There's no centerline bulkhead. 
products carrier. A products carrier is a tanker which carries refined petroleum products. So gasoline, kerosene, heating oil, diesel fuel, any any number or any possibility. And you know, ships like that, they don't only carry one product, they can carry multiple products. So you might have half of those tanks full of gasoline and the other half of those tanks full of kerosene. And that by definition is a products carrier. As opposed to what we've got here, this is a, a crude oil carrier. Uh, this, this large ship, as well as uh, many of the large ships that we've looked at, we'll go back to this one here. And so this is a crude oil tanker. The only thing this is carrying is raw crude oil out of the ground from various places on the earth. And we've got crude oil coming out of Alaska, coming down to the west coast of the United States. And we, I've, uh, I've talked about that a little bit last week. So uh, this is a product uh, tanker and now we're gonna move on. So we are looking at uh, one particular thing that I've got circled on this video. Uh, something that says DH and EH here, and just notice that in DH and it's delineated on the drawing, and we'll talk about that. I also want you to look at this uh, web frame. It's called a transverse web frame, and, but just a web frame is fine by me. Um, you'll see it, pretty big structural members. If we go back to this drawing, you see the web frames. This is a pretty big structural member in the ship. However, I want to point out, if we come back to this, overriding this web. And by the way, the reason that we're only seeing the web frame on the left side, the port side of the ship, I'm assuming that we're looking at the uh, uh, at the stern looking forward. They're just not, they're showing trying to show us uh, two things in this drawing. We're looking at a web frame, of course, that would extend over to this side, and then we're trying to see the. Uh, longitudinal bulkheads and we're seeing the some other parts and look these are all and you know what the question is I'm going to ask you is this longitudinally framed or uh, transversely framed this is still longitudinally framed yeah it's got some transverse webs in it you're, you're going to have those but the overall the overriding structural members here are longitudinal framing system um, DH and EH. And just notice where they are. So where this is the, by the way, we're talking about the type of steel that is used to for the plating on the deck and around the sides and the bottom of the ship. So in this area, it's designated as DH type steel. And then in this area, it's labeled EH. And then again, it's over here, it's DH. And right here where the, where the deck meets the uh, uh, skin, the siding of the ship, it's EH down here at the bilge keel. It's EH. Let's see, EH under this uh, longitudinal bulkhead. And look, the center uh, flat plate keel, the garboard straight area, and that's just designated as EH. So what does that mean? Well, look at this. This is from the American Alloy Steel, uh, a manufacturer of steel. We're talking about ABS, American Bureau, Bureau of Shipping. And let's read that together used primarily in structural applications in marine shipping industries for barges, ships, small vessels, and structures, and various types of equipment. There's the DH and there's the EH. Now EH is a stronger, right? What does it say up here? High strength structural steel. And EH is even stronger than DH, size for side. It has better more stronger more strength attributes and let's go back to the diagram why would it be there think about what's happening here we're thinking about the deck strength let's see on the uh, on the build strike up here on this shear strike as it makes the turn you know those are the those are the corners of the ship and so you'd want the extra strength of the steel you, you might hear grace barking in the background now she's growling. Now she's just whining that she can't go outside. Oh, someone's walking up and down the road, Grace. No oh, way, well, you can't go out. You've already been out. Here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. 
Come here. Come here. <laughs> well, she's not going to come. We're not going to be able to put her on the camera. So just remember that this uh, extra strength steel, the EH, better than the DH, more uh, greater strength, is in those areas of the ship where it would make stresses would be greater and therefore you'd want extra strength. And uh, again, that's what it's all about. And we see it here and we, and we see it here. The next topic that I want to talk about is, uh, you know, how do you get access to a tank? And this is a very simplified sort of a cartoonish uh, drawing, an artist rendering of a ship. And what are we looking at here? What I, what I want you to focus on is this opening in the tank. And it's actually called a tank top top. Tank top opening. Yeah, it's the same words which are used for that inner bottom. That's also the tank top. So you need to know about the tank top opening that goes into a tanker. You see there's a, a cover that's hinged up. Uh, this is where people have uh, access to it. And this is where, this is how you access a tank. Let's look at some of those pictures of, of what those look like. So here, um, some diagrams from the book of what a tank top uh, opening. And that's probably uh, from top to bottom. So here's, this would be deck level. And this would be up here. This would be about waist level. So they're probably uh, three and a half, four feet high, uh, four feet in diameter. Uh, there we are. There are a couple of uh, components that we're going to talk about. You'll see how they can be dogged down here. And we'll just go on to the next drawing here. There's some other views, uh, sort of a three-dimensional view. This particular area is called a strong back. It's for securing it down, but also for lifting, lifting it up. The next slide is going to give us a pretty good view. Uh, I'll take this drawing that we uh, just looked at and we'll sort of connect the dots. So this wheel, uh, this wheel up here, it's kind of like a, a jack. It's like a, a, a screw jack where you could you could screw that up or down and as you screwed it, uh, this strong back would lift and the associated the cover which is attached to the strong back. It's, you know, it's many hundreds of pounds. It has to be a pretty strong member. And so there it is. And of course, what are we looking at? We're looking at a, a personnel and uh, personal protective equipment. We've got an air breathing apparatus on, an air pack, and it's got rubber gloves, and uh, these are all sealed up, and the suit to go into the tank. And uh, you can see that there's somebody standing behind them back here, just assessing, and there's always going to be somebody standing by on deck. Um, let's see. So there's the, there's the, uh, the lift mechanism for the strong back and the cover right here right here let's see we've got some uh, we've got the strong back and there's the strong back pointing to that uh, we've got the cover here's the cover pointing at that and the dogs around the perimeter there's one of those dogs and we can see that at least a portion of the other dog that we'd be looking at you may you uh, you've walked by this diagram or this this model rather a number of times and, and uh, hopefully you've stopped and looked at it. Um, you know, we've walked by that hundreds, and just think about me, I've probably walked by that thousands of times, right? So out in the hallway on the second floor of the Smicks. And so you, next year, you're gonna look at that a little bit differently. Maybe you'll understand a little bit more. One of the things I'm gonna have you focus on in that in that model is these, uh, these are the cargo lines, which go up and deck, uh, up, up, back and forth, fore and aft on deck. And these are the manifolds which go left and right. They are interconnected. You can't necessarily see those, but those are interconnected so that fluid can flow into or out of the manifold through these pipelines. The other things that you can't really see when you look at this is that this particular icon right here where my pointer is, that says main cargo lines. And the other ones, the smaller ones are going to be different types of cargo lines. Those might be inert gas systems, they might be vapor recovery, and we're going to talk about those as we go through class. So check that view out. That's a memorable view to you. I'm going to switch over to my, uh, I'm going to go back to the camera now, and we're going to start doing some stuff. So we got a tanker here. We're 
This is a uh, online number five, but I've labeled it five Charlie as, as a part of a series and we'll take that away. Now, what are we talking about today? Where are we going to go? We're going to talk about piping systems now. Uh, we're going to talk about cargo pipes. That's kind of the primary thing. If, you know, that's, it's a tanker. Your job is to carry, carry cargo. So, you know, the cargo piping that you just looked at. And then there is a check, we'll say good ballast. Uh, there has to be ballast system and ballast, uh, uh, ballast water system. Something called inert gas, I just mentioned that, so we'll put a big check mark on that. Vapor recovery system, good. And on a crude oil tanker, you're gonna have crude oil washing. I'm not sure we'll get into that too much, but at least you're gonna hear the word. So we're gonna talk about those different aspects. Remember this diagram from uh, last Friday? Uh, we did, um, we sketched this ship out. It had one, two, three, four, five tanks in it. We talked about how the uh, how it works. I spoke about something called a pump room. And here's the pump room. You can see there's a little person going down the, uh, going down the, uh, going down the ladder there. And you know, kind of a switchback like you would see on any ship going into a space. By the way, there's uh, there are those switchback ladders going all the way in each tank, all the way to the bottom. You don't climb 50 or 60 or 70 feet down on a, a ladder, uh, a, an actual ladder. You come down. Uh, I'll use the word stairs, steps. And remember, back in the pump room, here's the pump. I'm going to just kind of highlight the pump and. Um, this was the, the uh, drive force for the pump. The driving force, either electric or diesel, it would be in the engine room and the shaft would come through that bulkhead. And here is the pump area. There would be a line coming up out of the pump. And so if this particular tank was filled up with fluid, we could take suction on this line by opening this valve. The fluid would then come up in and come back towards the pump, you know, just like grabbing uh, a straw and uh, sucking the, the liquid out of a big cup. You would could do the same thing. The pump would suck the liquid liquid out of this particular tank. And well, what happens then? So that's what we have to explore a little bit more. But we are going to talk about how that happens. Let me uh, let me fill in this diagram here. So I've got a I got it lightly and loosely sketched out here. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a ship tied up at the dock here. And this ship is divided into uh, different spaces. We'll put those uh, spaces here. And we'll divide it up like this. We're gonna label this uh, engine room. We're gonna label this pump room. And so this is cargo hold number one, number two, number three. Now the ship is tied up at the dock. And we are in a loading port. So I'm drawing the uh, pilings of the dock here. And um, we'll understand. Now let's put some lines out from the ship so we know that we are tied up to the dock. And we'll have some lines coming down here as well. So we are well secured to the dock. Now it's an awfully uh, simplified ship that doesn't even seem to be a superstructure uh, for, for, the, for the bridge deck. Uh, this is landmass back here. And uh, this is all water in between. The dock comes out to the ship like this. And there is a pipeline that comes out to the ship. And it's got some kind of, we're just going to draw it real simply. There's a, a flexible hose on the end of it. That pipeline is where the liquid is going to come from shore side. There's probably, we'd use the word the tank farm where all the tanks are stocked up or filled with their product, whatever it is, is going on the ship, the liquid, which is coming to the ship. In other words, the liquid is coming down, flowing into this pipeline. Now, once it gets to the ship, I want to go back. I'm going to put this previous diagram up there. I'm going to put this one right here. You see? 
we're thinking about this. Now we're going to switch over. Yeah, I know there's a few uh, less tanks, but we have a manifold. And this manifold goes across the ship. And there's a way of connecting that manifold on each end. And we're, going to, we're talking about the, the port side. So I am going to connect. Let's use whatever the liquid is that's coming down this pipe. We'll say it's it's right there. It's coming in. We're going to make this connection. I'll just do it like this. So we are going to have a solid. We're going to have a flexible line. We're going to connect it to the manifold. And then the manifold is then going to branch out and go this way up the ship. And it's going to go this way down the ship. It's going to go here and here. And there's actually other manifolds on there, which we'll talk about in a little bit. I want to point out a particular part of that manifold, or not of the manifold, but of the piping system. It goes down like this. It comes down into the bottom of the ship. It, I'll color it in. It comes down. It comes down like this. And how about we sketch that fluid? So here the, the liquid is coming to the ship. It comes up and goes into the manifold. It makes the corner. It comes around into this and it goes in and starts up, filling up the bottom of the ship. This is called a drop. This thing here is called a drop. Can you see that? I'm going to better highlight there with my black. A drop. I'm pointing to this vertical green pipe right here. And then we start to fill it up. We can fill that up, the, the green liquid, or rather the red liquid coming down the pipe, flowing through here, flowing through here, flowing through here, starts to fill up this whole tank. It's all the way filled up. Uh, it's an over, over simplification. I get that. That's fine. That's how we fill a ship. We use gravity feed. We fill it up. It comes in down, down the uh, line across the dock. It connects to the ship through the manifold. It goes through the deck lines and then it goes down the drop and goes into the ship. Pretty, well, I don't want to say it's simple. All my tanker colleagues would say that's it's so far from simple. It's, a, it's very detailed. But I'm going to do something different now. And I'm going to explain what's going on here. I'm going to have to sort of redraw that ship. Ship. And we're going to talk about how do you get the liquid out of that ship. So here's the dock. I won't sketch all the stuff in, but here's the dock before, just like it was before. I'm not going to go quite as much detail. And uh, there we go. So how do we get the liquid out of the ship? Well, this involves the pump room. So let's figure this out. We've got this whole tank now full of liquid and we're going to use this system that comes across the bottom and this pipe comes over here. It's hooked over. It's very near. The drop was here. We're not using that now. Now we're coming back aft to the pump room and then from the pump room it's going to come up on deck. And by the way, this is called a riser. Let me spell that out for you. L-I-S-E-R. So it's raising the fluid from down below. It makes another turn. The fluid comes up these pipes. And then what does it encounter again? It encounters the manifold and there's other lines up here, but we're just going to deal with just the one. So here's the fluid. It's coming through here. It's coming down here. This is discharging. It goes through the pump. It comes up on deck. It comes over to the manifold. And now we are in the discharge mode. We loaded it in port alpha and we're discharging in port bravo. 
So now we're going red fluid all the way down through the pump, all the way up, all the way across, through here, and now going up to the shore side. So we reversed the process. This is discharge. And this was load. Okay, so it was two different things. So study that and kind of be thinking, you know, and get that clear in your head. I want to show you uh, one really complex picture now. And I'm going to have to take the camera out of the way so you can see that. But look at this thing here. Well, everything I just did on the papers, everything I just did on the papers is what this is showing in, you know, a lot of complexity. Let's take a quick look at this. So we've got, here's the manifold. Now the significance of green, yellow, blue, red, not really very much, just to make it sort of evident. I suppose somebody could say, well, the green is on the starboard side, the red is on the port side, but, but besides that, it doesn't really matter much. What we see is we see the manifold for the shore side connections. This would be up here. This would be uh, the bow of the ship. This would be cargo tank number one, cargo tank number two, so on and so forth. Here's the drop that comes down. Here's another drop that comes down. There's various drops. You notice that every one of these lines has a different drop that comes down. And so we've got uh, in the tank, we've got, we've got lines running back and forth. Here's the pump room back here. If we could visualize behind these uh, lines, which we see, these red, yellow, blue, that, those pipelines that you can imagine the engine room being further aft, this would be the stern back here. Um, and so you can imagine how it comes up, what we just talked about, and it kind of comes over and connects and it goes out. Uh, and we can actually connect any to any one of those um, we can connect any color piping at the top level, at the bottom level, or at the manifold with something called crossovers. So we have risers back here, we have drops here, we have crossovers. You can see there's a crossover right there where it turns blue to um, blue to red. Uh, here's another crossover on the bottom where it's green to red. Let's see, we've got uh, very complex. You see there's yellow to blue. So we have lots of lots of different combinations. So that is a very um, complete diagram of a, of a cargo um, using a pump room cargo piping system. One of the things you're gonna learn in your tanker class when you take that with a I don't know who will be teaching it when you get there, but right now Captain Punt's teaching that and uh, Captain Slazes is teaching those courses, to, uh, two of our tanker guys. Uh, you're going to learn how to load and discharge a tanker in a, a two, one of, well, you use both places. You'll use the floating tanker model, which is in Dismukes Hall on sort of the uh, basement level down there by the physics lab. Maybe you appeared in there. We would have gone down and done a quick visit but uh, hopefully maybe you have peeked in there before and seen what's going on. It's a floating barge where we actually load and discharge. We have a, it's, it's, it's a wet environment, environment in a specially made uh, classroom pool. And the other one we do is looks very similar to what's here. And this is a uh, computer controlled environment and it replicates a computer control room, which uh, kind of like the engine control room, the ECR, but this is the tanker control room for uh, discharging and loading, and you have control of the pumps and control of the um, control of the pumps and control of all valves in the ship and on deck of the ship. So that's what what's going on there. I'm coming down to the end of the lecture, and I think we've covered all the details. This was um, sun's actually coming out here at uh, Studio Pusha. Hey, somebody said to me that this was uh, this is a uh, What's the next episode on uh, Captain Teal, uh, the Captain Teal show? Somebody came up with that phrase, so uh, I'm <laughs> it's starting to feel like a TV show uh, from my point of view too. So uh, I'll sign off and uh, just uh, 
enjoy the day and take care and I'll see you on Friday.